So I'm gonna tell you how LSU was able to score enough points on this great Auburn defense in order to win this game 23 to 20. Although you can argue that it was really more so close to 23-13 in terms of actual outcome, but the score looked a little bit closer. With that said, Auburn plays really good defense and LSU saw that firsthand, even with that offense that people thought was just gonna keep on rolling through everybody. And to be fair, the LSU offense did rack up a lot of yards. It just didn't translate to a lot of points in this game. So Auburn plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. You know, it's just their scheme. They go bump and run, man-to-man -man coverage, take what may happen. They're not afraid to go cover one and force you to make outstanding throws. If they get beat, that's okay. They chalk it up to an outstanding offense and they take the same risk the next play. I know this because Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator, he was a part of a similar scheme when he was at Alabama and that's what they did and people got mad and they thought the secondary was bad. And it's like, no, like we'll play man-to-man -man coverage. If you win, that's hats off to you, but we're gonna make you make that same hard throw every time. And the Auburn defense does that. Like they, they get corners who will be physical and who can run and they, they let the chips fall where they may. And so, and there's nothing wrong with that actually. Personally, I like that type of scheme. LSU took advantage of it though, with their great wide receivers at pivotal times. So Joe Burrow took chances versus tight coverage and hit on some of them to bolster some of LSU's early drives that got them some of their first points and kind of put them ahead. And because of that, I'm gonna show you through a series of plays here that LSU then was able to run the ball a little bit later because Auburn realized, okay, let's stop taking so many chances, giving up these passes to Jamar Chase, and uh, let's try to cover them a little bit more over the top. And I think LSU was able to run the ball a little bit more because of that, and that's how they were able to close out the game ultimately. So the second quarter, 13 minutes, 16 second mark, LSU is going four wide here. They have trips to the left side, and then wide receiver number two is in the slot. He runs somewhat of a corner route, but he seems to have gotten like lost or confused here. You know, maybe it was a miscommunication. Um, he didn't run toward the sideline. And there is where Joe Burrow put the ball. That's where he placed it. And now I want you to notice that is because this is against man-to-man -man coverage. So keep that in mind. So in the second quarter, 13 minutes, nine second mark, this is actually the next play. LSU, they go three wide, one wide receiver, uh, well, number one, uh, which is Jamar Chase. He's the close wide receiver on the right side. Auburn's playing bump and run coverage. And Jamar Chase fights this off, and he runs a crossing route to the left sideline. It's simple, but against man-to-man -man coverage, it's really hard to remain close when the receiver just runs across the field because you have to follow them crossing, and you're going to naturally be ahead of them or behind them, but you can't really blanket them in this way. So he gets a bit of a step on the Auburn defensive back, and Joe Burrow puts it on him accurately and in stride. A developing crossing pattern like this against man coverage can be quite effective, and LSU used it more than once in this game. So not too long after that, probably the next player would play after that, LSU targeted Jamar Chase again versus man-to-man -man coverage. This time, it's a go route down the left sideline. The DB was in great position, and his throw wasn't great. Joe Burrows wasn't. Now, he put this ball too far inside. Joe Burrow was trying to go back shoulder here. The ball landed too far inside, and it was behind the wide receiver, uh, although behind is where it was supposed to be, but it was supposed to be behind and on the left shoulder toward the left sideline. So, you know, it was a little rough, but the receiver made a great play and you got to give it up to your receiver. Um, and the DB couldn't get to the ball, which is ultimately what you want to do here. Jamar Chase made a great catch and this is against man-to-man -man coverage and you got to take your chance and make the Auburn defensive backs back off. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is you'll see that wide receiver number six, Terrence Marshall, the other LSU wide receiver. They have Jefferson, Marshall, and Chase uh, beat defensive back number four. I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> Bump and run man coverage here in, um, in the red zone for a touchdown. So um, I was about to say the wrong name, but Terrence Marshall gets a nice outside release and Joe Burrow throws it upfield to him with the DB in a fairly solid trail position here. Like it's not too bad. The ball placement had to at least have been good for this one. And I believe, you know, when you, when you see all these plays or when you see this one in particular too, you just see that Joe Burrow had to put it somewhere where his receiver can make a play on the ball. And in doing so, you take your chance against this man coverage, which is what you have to do against Auburn. And you see LSU do that. So, I believe, and they were, all these plays were on the same drive in the early second quarter when LSU was still scoreless. So LSU up to this point hadn't had a lot of success 
and they decided to try something new. So after this drive, Auburn tried to not give up these man coverage plays as much. Um, but due to that, I believe, and I had to go into the film a little bit more to, to verify, the LSU running game was actually able to get going. And that's how they scored to go up 16 to 13. And they stayed up for good at that point. They didn't trail anymore. Auburn didn't really get any offense going. And Joe Burrow uses his really good wide receivers to get the offense going. It really was a spectacle. And that's something that that's cool to see. The interesting thing is like, I wonder if they'll be able to replicate this. So I wonder if Alabama will employ a similar strategy against LSU and playing bump and run coverage and seeing if they can beat their corners. Because I believe Alabama's corner is actually better than Auburn. So Trevor and Dixon, Patrick the team, we can do a better job of covering these receivers. But how good and will they risk giving man-to-man -man coverage like Auburn did? This defensive game plan, honestly, for Auburn, while it wasn't perfect and they did give up yards, it was fairly effective. Now, how effective? How about you guys discuss that in the comment section? Let me know. How do you think? Do you think somebody should try to do this again? You can let me know. But it was fairly effective, at least in terms of keeping the score low. If Alabama generates good offense and they play a defense that is similar, what do you think happens in this game? That's something I'm interested in. But that's how LSU was able to take advantage of Auburn. Let's hear what you guys think. I'll see you in the comments.